This is mountain mint that I'm really excited to get started on. This is a plant that's supposed to be absolutely amazing for pollinators. It's deer resistant for starters. And I've actually seen some studies that it might be beneficial as a healing element for bumblebees, native bumblebees. So that you have to take with a grain of salt. There's some research out there that people have found that it helps bumblebees. Now, whether or not how that study was done, I, I can't attest to, but I, I thought the research was quite interesting and it, along with uh, sunflowers was another one that they mentioned as well. Either way, it is known, well known as being packed with benefits for pollinators. So we're gonna get it going today and hopefully get it into the garden in the spring. So this mountain mint is said to grow best in zones four to eight. We're technically 8.5, so we might have a hard time keeping it going, but we're gonna give it a go. Like mint, it spreads by rhizomes, but this one is known to not be um, invasive, which is really good for a mint. In order for this one to be beneficial for pollinators, it really is likely gonna to need to be in the full sun because that's where the best flowering occurs. Mountain mint requires light in order to germinate. So we're gonna plant just the seeds on the top of the soil without covering them. And I'm gonna use a little bit of perlite with them. So these are indeed a very small seed. So we're gonna spread these across the top. So I sprinkled them on, they are there now and we can give it a drink. So we'll take a look back in about 14 or 15 days to see how the germination is doing on that mountain mint. All right guys, our mountain mint has finally germinated. Let's take a look at it. So these took about two weeks for them to sprout. They absolutely did need direct sunlight. UV lights did not work. I actually tried that for a couple of days. That didn't actually work. Then we put them under direct sunlight and that did work. And thank you very much. That was a YouTube subscriber that actually gave us that tip. Um, that was awesome. Thank you very much, Red Fox, for that one. So it is the direct sunlight that actually got them to germinate and they are doing just lovely. And fortunately for these guys, they don't require cold stratification. So that made it a little bit easier to get them going. So we're gonna plant the mountain mint in this little pollinator patch here that kind of exists within the middle of our garden. That'll help us bring some pollinators into the garden. Now I would recommend when you are planting seeds for the first time that it's often better to do it in a controlled environment like a pot like this. I've often tried planting my mountain mint in my pollinator patch, which is this big lengthy row of plants, but they get lost and they don't germinate properly. There's not enough control and I've never seen them come to fruition. So the best way to do it is first off to start in a pot then you can get used to the leaf. You'll recognize them, you'll know what you're looking at so that you don't accidentally pluck them thinking, oh, well, that's an invasive weed or I didn't mean for that to be here. Uh, it's too easy to lose track of them when you plant them direct. But now I know what the leaf looks like. I can put them all together in a patch and I know that that is my mountain mint. It also allowed me to control the elements very easily, the light, move it in and out of light and water, etc. So you, you really do a much better job when you use a controlled environment to start off even wild seeds. All right, guys, I'm super excited to add this pollinator friendly plant into our garden. This one is one of those super friendly ones with their healing, supposed healing re remedies for bees and stuff. So I'm excited to have it here. Either way, it is great for pollinators and in the garden it goes. So hopefully it helps you if you are planting mountain mint in your garden. As always, be friendly, be kind.